Well, it's officially the off season for us. Uh, spring turkey hunting is right around the corner. And what I want to cover is in depth, um, not just quick brief. Anybody that's been a fan of our show or has watched episodes that I've done, you know I hunt a lot of edges, points, funnels. And I want to do something different this year. I want to do something very in depth to really show you guys um, some of the stuff that we're doing here and how we're going about scouting. And we're going to be showing you a lot of different aerial photos. We're going to be going into the field, uh, showing things that we're we're looking for when scouting for this fall's whitetail hunt. Now, it doesn't matter where you are in a country. You could be in the prairies of South Dakota, you could be down in Texas, you could be in Wisconsin here in the Midwest, and whitetails, they do the same thing. They have the same patterns. And what I mean by that is, yes, their food source is gonna change, their bedding, uh, the type of habitat they may bed in changes, but they're always gonna have the same pattern. What I mean by that is you're gonna have a point A, that's gonna be their bedding location. Then you're gonna have a point B, that's gonna be the travel corridor, or travel route that they're using to head to the point C, which is gonna be the food source. It doesn't matter where you are in a country, you're gonna have that point A, B, and C. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna break this down, and we're gonna show you the different Different stuff that we're looking for and during that travel route to the food source from the beds. Now where they are between that point A, the bedding, and point C, the food source, and where we're going to set up is going to change throughout the year. And that's what we're going to kind of cover is, is during the early season, you're going to want to be tight to that bedding location, that point A. As the rut kicks in, these bucks are looking for does. As they're really starting to chase these does, you might want to start moving out towards that point C, that food source, because those bucks are really going to be concentrating near those food sources looking for does. We're also going to be covering where you want to set up and scout for agriculture when you're hunting corn, soybeans, different food sources, food plots. We're also going to be covering a lot of what I always refer to as public land. And I know through the years people have you know, kind of said, oh, Josh always mentions or says the word public land. I'm not talking about hunting necessarily a heavily pressured area. Um, that people associate with public land. I use it to describe a geographical location, if that makes sense. What I'm talking about is your large tracts of timber um, that are unbroken. There's no roads, no developments in there. There's no fields in there. Um, or hunting large swamps or cattail marshes where you don't have the roads, you don't have broken up with a bunch of other um, pieces of property. I'm using it to describe a large area, 600 acres or more. And whenever you hear me refer to public land, that's because here in Wisconsin, when you find those areas, 99% of the time, that's on public land. So we're gonna go now, and we're gonna start breaking this stuff down, uh, trying to show you what we're looking for and how we go about finding our spots for this fall. We first want to start our scouting by what we call cyber scouting. It's getting online, looking at aerial photos, looking at Google Earth, um, looking at topographical maps, and when I'm hunting large blocks of property or timber or marsh, whatever it may be, where do we go and where do we start looking um, by narrowing down? Where do we start putting boots on the ground? And that's through a process elimination. What we mean by that is I want to look at the areas that I don't want to be hunting at. So I want to start crossing off those areas. And pretty soon as you start crossing off those areas, you start seeing a location or an area of where you want to start further scouting. So those areas that we don't want to be going into are going to be areas that are very close to the road. Um, this is especially true on your large timber areas. Reason being is, is why would a buck put up with pressure when he can just move another mile, two miles back in and get away from pressure. Now if you're hunting more agriculture uh, property, that rule might be an exception. You might find bucks close to the road. They're trying to get away from the pressure that's back in the agriculture along the fields and in timber um, where the terrain is more broken up. Those deer might be closer to the road. But when you're talking big timber, you're gonna to wanna to start looking further back in, if that makes sense. They, they're able to get further back into an area where there's nobody gonna be going into. So I want to avoid areas that are close to the road. I want to avoid areas that end up to being like a trailhead, meaning you're driving down a logging road and it just comes to a stop. That has a tendency to funnel hunters also. Everybody wants to go far in, everybody wants to go deep, and they all access that same point. So when you find those trailheads, chances are at night when you come walking out, I know a bunch of you have seen this, there's a bunch of trucks parked, you go in in the morning, there's nobody, you come back out at night and there's a bunch of trucks there. The deer learn that, they know those access points. What we like doing is not parking at a trailhead, start driving down a logging road, 
stop literally um, halfway in that logging road and then cut in from there. Park somewhere in there, don't go all the way to the end because that's where your access points are for other hunters also. That theory holds true because I think a lot of guys are just afraid of getting lost. You'll hear a lot of people talk about how they get way back in there, but truth, truth be told, most guys don't go more than a quarter mile, maybe even a half mile back into the further timber, further into the swamp, and you can pretty much have that area to yourself. So start eliminating areas and you're gonna start seeing locations that is not easily accessible, that's low on hunting pressure, and where these deer will start to get filtered and pushed into.